Hey there guys, Harry here. Today I want to share a recipe with you guys that's near and dear to my heart. A recipe I've been working on for probably about like a year and a half now. Took a lot of experimenting and different trials to kind of come up with the dough recipe that I've come up with for this pizza. I've tried everything from like a no knead dough to a dough that you need for like hours. Tried doughs that you knead and mix together and then let ferment in the fridge for like three or four days and the recipe that I've finally come up with that works really well pretty much all the time is a recipe that takes like 10 hours from start to finish usually with doughs of like any sort of bread you have to wait like at least a day or two for it to be like really good but I've found pretty much no difference between waiting a day or even two days and just waiting a few hours like I said for this dough so gonna take you guys through the entire recipe there's a lot of like science behind why like I've chosen the ingredients and the quantities that I have and kinda like the protocols that go with it based on like the times and how like I do all my mixing which is pretty like important to follow when you're making this recipe but I'm not gonna go into that because that's like outside the scope of this video so it's just gonna hopefully be a short video and it'll teach you guys how to make like the perfect pizza dough that I've been able to come up with. Quickly before we get started here I want to explain this spreadsheet to you guys real quick. On the left side here it has all of the ingredients listed out and it has percentages next to them. This is what's called like a baker's percentage. So the flour which is the main ingredient in any dough is always going to be 100 percent. The water is going to vary depending on what type of dough you're making. So for pizza dough, typically it's between like 60 to 70 percent. It's going to vary kind of a lot based on the humidity in your area. So I live in Buffalo and it's like 80 or 90 percent humidity like every day. So that means I want to keep my hydration, which is the percent water, a little bit lower. So today I'm going to do 62 percent. I've done anywhere between like 60 and 65 and it all works kind of well. A little bit lower hydration is a little bit easier to work with. It also makes the dough a little bit uh, stronger which means it's a little harder to stretch. So that might be something to keep in mind if you're like just learning how to stretch dough. It's actually pretty tough which you guys will see later in the video. Other than that everything else I typically keep the same. Yeast and salt are usually five percent or half a percent yeast, two percent salt, 2% sugar and oil. Oil and sugar are kind of optional ingredients in pizza dough. A lot of like the traditional recipes don't have those two ingredients, but they help if you're not cooking your oven in, or your pizza in like a really hot oven like they would in Italy. And on the right side here, it has the number of pizzas you want to make and the weight of each pizza. So I usually go with 250 grams, which is about 9 ounces and that's just like the right amount of dough for it to be able to stretch to about like between 11 and 13 inches which is usually where I like to stretch my pizzas to and the middle ingredients will auto calculate based on the numbers that you put on the right side here and based on the percentages that you choose for the left side hope that makes sense to you guys and that's pretty much what I'm going to be referencing throughout the entire mixing process when I'm adding all the ingredients in. The first step in making the dough is the mixing and kneading phase. So the first thing you're going to want to do to get started on making the dough is combining just the flour and just plain tap water. Some people say that like their water, their tap water isn't good so they choose to use spring water. So you guys could like play around with that but for the flour you're going to want to use a higher protein flour so we're going to use bread flour it says King Arthur brand and a lot of people say that King Arthur brand has like the highest quality flour that you can get in the United States I think and we're just going to mix it together in like a big mixing bowl we're going to need a scale in order to measure and weigh all of the ingredients and we're going to need some sort of mixing spatula or spoon in order to combine it all so again the first step is going to be combining the flour and the water into what's called an autolyze, something like that. 
and that's going to allow the flour that you add to the water to fully hydrate and it will allow like the production the formation of the gluten in the flour to get started without adding the other ingredients which can interact with some of the flour in there and not allow for full hydration of the flour so this is just going to lead to an easier dough to work with when you're kneading but it'll also give the gluten formation a head start and that's what's going to lead to the uh, puffiness and the chewiness of the dough in the finished product. The quantities of flour and water that you're going to want to add for this first step is all of the water and then that same equal part in flour so that's what's called 100% hydration so that's what the starter or autolyze is going to be so in my case with the amount of dough that I'm making it's 276 grams of flour and 276 grams of water so we're going to be adding that remaining flour plus the other ingredients in a little bit here once this mixes together. I typically like to let this sit for anywhere from like two to four and maybe even like up to six hours if you're out of the house or something and can't come home and add the other ingredients yet. So as long as you let it rest, probably you can probably get away with like a minimum of a half hour to an hour, but I like to give it a little bit longer just to really ensure that the flour hydrates and the, the gluten starts to develop on its own which will require ne less kneading in the next phase. So here's what the dough looks like right now. It's really wet like I said and you're just going to cover this with aluminum foil or like plastic wrap or a towel even and let it sit at room temperature again for I like to stick between like two and four hours. It's been three hours since I mixed together the flour and the water so I'm just going to add the remaining ingredients, which is the rest of the flour, which by difference is 169 grams. So the way I got that was just subtracting the total amount of, or the amount of flour that I added, which was 276 grams, from the total amount of flour in the recipe, which is 445 grams. So I'm going to add that. I'm going to add the yeast, which I found is a lot easier to do with a teaspoon then by weighing it because usually it's a pretty small amount and if you have a scale that measures in like one gram increments it won't really pick up those small changes in weight so that's going to be an instant dry yeast not an active dry yeast just because instant dry is a little bit quicker and you don't have to like do any proofing or anything like you have to do with active dry and then the other ingredients are the salt I use kosher salt but you could use any kind of salt that you really want going to use granulated sugar and extra virgin olive oil so I'm just going to add those all together mix it up just like I did before the dough is going to be a lot thicker now and a lot uh, less watery once you add the remaining flour and just going to let that sit for about a half hour to an hour just until it starts to rise a little bit and then we're going to start kneading took about five minutes of mixing just to get everything combined together and so that there wasn't any flour or anything left on the bottom just want to make sure that that's all together so that the dough can start to form and again the gluten will start to develop even more which will make kneading easier so I'm gonna leave this like I said for like 30 to 60 minutes and then I'll see you guys then it's been like another hour just gonna get started on kneading this dough what I typically do when I knead the dough is knead for about like 5 to 10 minutes and then let it rest for about 5 to 10 minutes and I'll do that probably until I've been kneading for like 20 to 30 minutes total so really the goal is just to knead it until it's like really smooth and there aren't any like lumps of any specific ingredient which would most likely be be flour and you just really want to work the dough so it's smooth and some people like to do like called a window pane test so you could take a little bit of dough stretch it out and if you hold it up to the light you should be able to see like straight through it that means that the gluten structure is really developed which will help maintain the strength of the dough which will allow it to stretch when you're making the pizza and not rip when you're trying to stretch the dough so I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's done one more thing that I forgot to mention when you're kneading the dough don't add any extra flour. It might seem a little bit sticky at first and you might feel like you need to add flour. 
but as you keep working the dough that water the extra water will get absorbed and if you keep adding flour it's gonna bring down the hydration of the dough so it's gonna be more like bagel dough or pretzel dough so it's not gonna have like a good rise in the crust like you want for a good pizza so I finished up kneading the dough and it's pretty much like hundred percent smooth there's still like a little bit of like lumpiness to it but that'll work itself out as it starts to rise and ferment so that's pretty much it for the mixing and kneading phase so for the first rise and fermentation phase it's pretty much no work unlike the kneading the kneading is like the most labor-intensive work but for this phase you move the kneaded dough back into the mixing bowl cover it with foil or plastic wrap and a towel let it sit at room temperature for I'd say like a minimum of four hours and up to eight hours. If you're going to do longer than eight, you could throw it in the fridge. You could throw it in the fridge for like two to three days, which would be considered like a cold ferment. But if you leave it at room temperature, it takes a lot shorter amount of time. The goal of this is just to get the dough to pretty much double in size. So about four hours should be like the minimum. All right, so it's been five and a half hours and the dough has pretty much doubled or even tripled in size. So the first rise and bulk fermentation phase is over. The next step is to remove the dough from the bowl. What I'm going to do is portion out the dough into the three individual dough balls because as you guys remember from before I made enough dough to make three 250 gram dough balls. So what I'm going to do is take the dough out of the bowl, portion it out, and then form the dough into tight and like smooth dough balls which you guys will see and then I'm going to leave one of the dough balls out for what I'm going to make tonight put the other two in the fridge and typically I like to use those for just about a few days maybe even up to a week but at that point the dough gets old and it becomes too stretchy and the dough rips so after the dough balls have already been portioned out just going to leave one on the counter for tonight and cover that with a towel and gonna let it sit for anywhere between one to two hours the other two dough balls I'm gonna put in the fridge so when I take those out to make pizza on another day I'll usually let that sit on the counter so it can get to room temperature for about like three to four hours but for now since the dough has been out all day I'll see you guys in one to two hours alright so it's only been like 45 minutes but I'm just gonna preheat the oven right now to 550 degrees with my pan on the bottom rack. I'm using a cast iron pizza pan. You guys could use like a pizza stone or anything like that. You could even buy like uh, tiles at like hardware stores. Not too sure about that so you guys should look into that before you take my word for it. Just gonna give the dough another 45 minutes or so to continue rising before we start stretching. Before you start stretching the dough you're gonna wanna flour your pizza peel or cutting board or you could use the back of a uh, sheet pan and just put some flour on the back of that because that's where you're going to lay your pizza once you're done stretching it where you're going to top it and then what you're going to use to slide the pizza into the oven so in order to stretch the dough there are some techniques that you need to kind of practice that will get you really good at stretching the dough to your desired thinness and total like diameter so the first technique is going to be just to use your fingertips or the flat side of your finger just to kind of press the dough out into around maybe about like six inches. The next is what I like to call like the steering wheel method. So you're going to hold the dough like in your fingertips with your fingertips around the crust and just kind of like gravity pull down on it and that will help stretch out the dough to a little bit bigger maybe like eight inches. Then the next step is to make fists with your hands and lay the dough on top of your fists and just continue stretching. Gravity will pull, but also pull your hands apart a little bit to help stretch that dough. If the dough is like new, like I just made this today, so it's probably not going to rip because it's very strong dough. But if you have older dough, it might get some holes in it, which are going to be kind of bad when you top it because the sauce is going to leak through the crust. And lastly, a technique that took me a really long time to figure out, you're going to toss the dough and this really helps to stretch the dough out a little bit more and really get to like 12 and 13 inches, which 
I feel is like the best size for this dough because it allows the thin the middle of the crust to be really thin and crispy but allows the outside crust to be a little thicker and chewier so definitely takes a lot of practice to figure out these stretching techniques but once you get that down it'll be really easy to stretch pretty much any dough immediately after you stretch it you want to put it down on your floured peel top it pretty much like as soon as possible with whatever toppings you really want today I'm using just some tomato sauce that I pureed with some salt uh, some mozzarella cheese it's a high moisture kind and just some basil that's pretty much how I make like all my pizzas just because I like the combination of those and it's just like plain pizza and I don't really like to put any extra toppings on it lastly once the pizza is on the peel and topped as desired you're just going to slide it in the pan onto the pan in the preheated oven and cook it for anywhere between five to seven or eight minutes depending on how done you want the bottom to be and how charred you want the crust and the toppings to be so after the pizza is cooked you're just going to take it out of the oven the same way you put it in the oven helps to have a pair of tongs handy just to kind of pull it out and I like to let it cool on a cooling rack just to let the bottom cool and not get soggy by sitting on a cutting board or sitting on the pizza peel alright guys so that's the recipe I really hope that you guys try it out I'm sorry that this video ended up being so long probably like upwards of 20 minutes but hope you guys were able to sit through it if not just check out the spreadsheet because that will kind of break down everything for you I'll admit that I had a little bit of a little bit of a tough time stretching this dough so if you guys want to try like a different method instead of letting it sit at room temperature for the first rise in fermentation for like four to six hours I'd recommend putting it in the fridge and letting it sit there for like two to three two to three days and then pick up the recipe from the second rise and proof and again since the dough is going to be cold just let it sit out a little bit longer so I really hope that you guys try out the recipe at least a few of you if you do tag me on Instagram in some of your pictures and if you have some troubles kinda stretching the dough or anything like that just let me know and I'll try to help you guys out give you some like tips on things that I've done to kinda fix different problems that I've had along like the time just trying to figure out this recipe so again hope you guys enjoyed the video sorry it was so long don't forget to like and comment and if you're just stumbling upon this video you're probably not going to want to subscribe since this isn't really a cooking channel just a guy that really likes pizza so again hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one